Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our, our conference on um, Talent 2021. We are thrilled to, to introduce you to one of our sponsors from Eightfold. Um, Shabi, I'm going to let you introduce yourself and let you take the floor from here, but thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Audrey. Uh, so my name is Shabi Ormazabal. Uh, I'm the VP of Product Marketing uh, at Eightfold. Um, and basically, I'll be talking a little bit about how to turn trends into action and how to transform your talent operations, kind of in the current climate that uh, we're all experiencing within uh, the HR world. Um, so first of all, just want to tell you a little bit about who we are as a company uh, at Eightfold. Um, we have a very lofty mission, which is really helping define or find the right career for everyone in the world. And you'll understand as I describe a little bit further what we do and how we operate, how we feed into that mission. What are some of the elements that we bring to bear to help organizations be more effective, to help candidates be more effective as well when they're searching for, for job opportunities. Um, we are a single AI platform for all talent. So we kind of combine multiple data sets. We have one very large uh, anonymized data sets of over uh, 1 billion profiles where we really understand deeply with our AI the skills and capabilities and career paths of many people across the world. And that gets married to public data sets when you have a specific profile you're looking at and you want to get up to the minute information from public information such as LinkedIn or Hoover's or uh, GitHub or any other sources that can really enrich and enhance that profile. And the third data set is the HR information systems, the applicant tracking systems, all the different systems that any organization using Eightfold has, where we can bring together those three data sets and really enrich the process for talent acquisition and talent management. We are a company with a global footprint. We have over 100 customers across 110 countries and 19 languages. We've been around for just over five years uh, with headquarters in Santa Clara in Silicon Valley, uh, California, where I'm connecting to from today. Uh, we have about 500 employees worldwide. And really at the heart of what we do is this patented deep learning AI technology, which I'll kind of talk through in the second half of my presentation, how it applies to some of these trends and challenges that we're seeing and how we can make things better. And finally, just to, to sort of emphasize, we work across with many customers across many industries, the federal government as well. So all of our certifications are really important for us in terms of uh, cloud best practice, data privacy, FedRAMP, OFCCP, and many other areas such as privacy and uh, data residency with GDPR and, and CCPA. So with that all out of the way, let me just uh, dive in a little bit to kind of what we're talking about. Um, it's, you know, to say it's a challenging time to be in uh, human resources is kind of an understatement. So, you know, these are just some of the headlines from a single month in 2020. You know, we're seeing a lot of talent challenges in terms of changing needs, changing expectations, uh, shifts in talent supply. We're seeing diversity challenges um, in terms of equity, inclusion, transparency, and there are organizational challenges as well. So hybrid and remote work is kind of like the new normal, and it's really shifting business models. So, you know, many of us in different organizations were already working on digital transformation uh, that were changing our capabilities and employee experiences. And then we were hit with a global pandemic that really kind of changed everything about the way we work overnight. Now, what's also interesting is, um, you know, talent is not only the most important priority for an organization, but really identifying, selecting, managing, and championing talent is also one of the most difficult functions, even when things are kind of at a normal. So, you know, today we have this perfect storm of issues that impact kind of the way we look at talent in our organizations. And those factors are kind of forcing us to help to really get creative, innovate, and rethink or almost start fresh with any of these processes. So you probably heard about the term, the great resignation, and maybe even the great rehire, depending on your industry. But what we're really kind of going through is a great reassessment. So with everything going on, people are reassessing how they want to work. And at the same time, organizations are reassessing how they can accommodate some of those requests. And you know, also with any kind of reassessment, there's a lot of movement. So people are resigning to change jobs. People are both retiring early as well as choosing to retire if they were putting it off throughout the 2010s. And many others are starting their own businesses entirely. So the Bureau of Labor Statistics just reported a record high of people quitting their jobs during the month of August. Another issue is that there's a mismatch 
between the industries where jobs are in need and where people are available. So many people are changing jobs, but also industries. And many organizations are evaluating candidates differently, looking for related and transferable skills. So skills are really uh, gaining prevalence and importance here. It also, you know, uh, if that wasn't enough, like in terms of other recessions and downturns, we're now working to reopen and to get things back on track. And this rebound is kind of occurring faster than many have expected. So over 75% is estimated of the jobs lost during the pandemic are back. And additionally, many other roles and requirements are brand new and may have been recreated, created as a result of the pandemic. And some of those roles never existed before. So this kind of creates a pressing need to solve for different talent priorities and also to consider new practices, new approaches, new mindsets, and, and really new tools. All this to say is that these trends and the perfect storm of factors have kind of created challenges for HR and talent teams and that we're working to overcome. And increasingly, it kind of appears it's not just an effort to reach the other side of the pandemic, but a lot of these challenges and changes will be with us for a while. So some of these kind of boil down to these, these four points is, you know, employers' talent needs are changing and organizations and people can't hire fast enough. Uh, second, organizations now have to expand opportunities for hybrid and remote work. There's a lot of factors that are playing into that. Uh, third, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion is an increasingly critical consideration <clears throat> for all aspects of organizational talent. And finally, understanding, identifying, reskilling, and upskilling an organization's talent becomes really mission critical. So on the first challenge, in terms of talent needs that are changing and people not being able to hire fast enough. One of the reasons why everyone's feeling challenged during the pandemic is that a lot of these challenges were already appearing before COVID-19 due to the pressures of digital transformation. So traditional talent pools for sourcing are kind of tap dry almost as everyone is recruiting for the most in-demand talent needs. And increasingly every company is becoming more of a data-driven tech company, kind of the old adage that software is eating the world. So if you think about it, one data point across the S&P 100 in 2018 is that 49% of all job postings were just across 39 types of roles. The remaining 51% were for a longer tail of about 872 different roles. And if we look across at Europe, uh, the FTSE 100 in London, 41% of all job openings were for just 20 roles in 2018, and the remaining 59% of jobs were for 641 other roles. So again, really a lot of concentration on specific types of roles. So organizations are no longer able to have kind of a static recruitment marketing approach and uh, you know, really an employee value proposition for a mass audience. They need to really attract talent uh, in a candidate and employee-centered way, really persona-driven, and being really transparent to help set expectations and explain about what kind of person and what kind of skill sets going to thrive in an organization and who may not be a great fit. Now, the second challenge is uh, employers now must consider hybrid and remote options for almost every single role. So overnight during the pandemic, we all had to come to grips with working from home, many folks with families at home with us. And now as kids go back to school and the world opens up, about 87% of people uh, want to continue to work from home and 42% would change jobs to stay working from home. Now, here's some interesting stats or graph from Indeed. Uh, job postings offering remote work are up 50% compared to the spring of 2020. So as part of earlier digital transformation efforts before the pandemic, the shift was kind of already occurring and there were predictions that in 2019, close to 50% of knowledge workers would be working remote by 2022. But fast forward to today, and it's even faster of a, sh of a shift that we expected in the new way of work, and those percentage are continuing to increase. And as much as working remotely may create operational challenges requiring digital collaboration tools and asynchronous work schedules, kind of the removal of walls and physical locations also creates a great deal of opportunity for strategic talent planning and for being able to kind of find talent for their field and in, in much uh, broader uh, geographic areas. Now, the third challenge is 
around diversity, equity, and inclusion. It's really become a critical area of focus in all aspects of talent. And interesting stat or data point here is the number of HR leaders calling DE&I a top priority has increased by 80%. And the number of CEOs and boards of directors that have been focused on diversity, equity, inclusion has also increased significantly with the number of companies talking about these topics on investor calls increasing by about 10x. It's also gained a, a stronger focus in leadership development, pay equity, HR policy, and programming. And in 2021, the market for HR talent, especially recruiting talent, is really red hot. But more specifically, an interesting data point is that there's been an 800% increase, 8x increase in job postings seeking dedicated diversity recruiters in organizations. So it's really becoming a top priority for many different companies. The fourth challenge is to kind of understand, identify, you know, and planning for skills is really becoming mission critical. So you're probably hearing a lot about skills. They're kind of increasingly the underpinning of talent management practices. They impact things like workforce planning, learning and development, and also recruiting assessment and selection. However, one of the hardest parts of incorporating skills into your talent process is really understanding which skills you're going to need and how they correspond to your existing roles going forward. So in this piece of research from Gartner, it was identified that the number of skills included in job postings has been increasing about 10% year over year. However, about 33% of the skills present in a job posting in 2017 are no longer needed in 2021. But more than 50% of those skills from 2017 are still appearing heavily in 2021 job postings. So it's kind of important to consider as our historical process become more, less and less relevant, people might be hiring externally for outdated skills or training employees internally in the wrong skills, hoping to advance their career. And that can have a, a lasting impact for both the progression of talent within your organization, as well as the strategy of your organization overall with regards to talent. So, you know, we talked about this already, HR has a ton on its plate but HR is not always set up for success. Some of the things that organizations have struggled with in the past to date, um, many organizations have used fragmented point solutions for talent management and for talent acquisition, really creating kind of data silos across the organization. So information and outcomes don't always connect. And even with the best tools, having multiple solutions, tools, areas to look for information really impacts adoption and utilization. And fragmented as it may be, HR systems are also abundant with data that is like a rear view mirror. It all points backwards to what someone's done in the past, but not necessarily focus on what they're capable of doing next in their careers. And as we think about kind of a post pandemic workforce, in many cases, a largely remote workforce, there are a different set of challenges that organizations need to tackle. So not just ensuring that people are able to work, but they're still able to grow and develop in ways that help businesses compete with agility and resilience to meet unknown challenges that 2021 and, and beyond will undoubtedly bring. So thinking, going back to the initial challenge around uh, changing talent needs and need to hire at speed, um, you know, something I've heard from different uh, folks in the, the talent acquisition technology space is that one of the key trends occurring over the last few years was the explosion of point solutions, as I mentioned before, for talent acquisition and talent management designed to help address automation, identification, and operations for talents. So there have been tools created to enhance and innovate just about every step of the talent processes. You've probably heard from many of the available vendors in the space, from candidate experience to recruitment operations to matching and assessments. So from our perspective, what we're focused on at Eightfold we really think about how we consolidate a great number of those point solutions into a single composable platform to help drive efficiency, unify data, and increase adoption. So for example, in the talent acquisition space, we focus on things like talent matching. We talk about or implement for our customers personalized career sites, sourcing support, a full CRM or candidate relationship management offering, assessment and screening capabilities that can be integrated into our platform, and also interview scheduling. 
So, you know, that's where we would kind of really focus on leveraging those AI native talent intelligent layers that can drive better capabilities and operational efficiency with some of the examples or results that we have here. So a little bit small discrete on the screen there, but in terms of job calibration, we're talking about reducing the amount of time invested down to 30 minutes versus weeks in some cases. Um, app personalized career site applications really driving the engagement of visitors to a career site to applicants uh, up to the you know multiple tens of percentage range, so up to 40% visitors that actually apply, whereas sometimes the standard is really around just a couple percentage points. So you're removing friction for people applying and also driving the brand equity of those companies that are able to capture the talent. And you see other improvements there around less cost, better candidate engagement, uh, et cetera. Additionally, um, one of the key areas about um, talent acquisition that can be really interesting is how you can leverage AI on the personalized career site of organizations. So typically when an applicant comes, they have to decipher what is this organization about? What's the jargon on their website? How do they describe their jobs and their job hierarchies? How can I assess whether I'm a fit for what they're actually offering and search across uh, locations, geography, uh, different skills and different uh, job descriptions? So you know, candidates no longer have to do that process, an onerous process. They're able to just simply upload their resume or point to a LinkedIn link, and that will actually ingest their information and s surface those opportunities ranked by, by degree of fit that are best match for the candidate. And there's a lot of transparency there as well. It explains why you could be a fit for a role. It could be the number of years of experience. It could be the types of roles that you've had before, the types of skills that are directly uh, stated within your experience, also inferred that we match against our pool of 1 billion profiles and are able to uh, really help the candidates match better. So what that does is both give the candidate more uh, confidence when they're actually applying for roles, but also creates a better brand experience and, and removes friction in the process. When we talk about the second challenge uh, about hybrid and remote options. Um, you know, with the roles opening up, this allows organizations to move beyond the telecommuting around a, an HQ or a hub or a territory to really think strategically about the talent in the specific markets that might, they might not even have been able to consider before without relocating employees. So one of the things that we focus on is really around talent intelligence and analysis to be able to visualize your talent funnel and run dynamic reports and compare the available talent pools in the market to your existing employee base. So with that, we aim to help organizations identify where talent resides in the market based on geographic availability, as well as which universities and employers and roles are commonly producing or employing people with those skills. So you know, back in 2018, it was big news when a major consumer goods company announced that they were removing location as a barrier for leadership positions in their organization. You didn't have to re reside or relocate in their HQ. You could work from anywhere in the world. And now this approach, which felt so alien or different, is becoming increasingly common. Um, but HR doesn't always have the tools to really direct talent teams how to operate in this new world. And also, if we do, the data might reside somewhere outside of the systems that we're operating in for talent. So here's another example of how talent intelligence, operations, and strategy can kind of come together for even greater agility. And we're talking about um, diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, to help address the efforts organizations have been looking at talent pools and job requirements to try to expand their audiences and remove organizational barriers to inclusion. So with talent intelligence, you can start to do things like examine your talent funnel for pipeline diversity and also review audiences by critical skills and adjacent skills. So really understanding how those uh, skills can impact diversities, can help candidates and companies, sorry, uh, from posting inhibitor skills requiring a job that can actually deter candidates and not find the right talent that you're looking for. So in this scenario that I have here, if you're looking to hire project managers, for example, some of the data that we've uncovered uh, shows that you'd be 1.5 times more likely to find female candidates for project management if you looked for 
or included mentions of product management instead of product development in your job descriptions. And also, um, another example, you'd be twice as likely to find female candidates for product manager roles if you looked for strategic planning as a skill here at the top than if you looked for business development. So with a deeper understanding of adjacent skills and talent pipeline, not only can you reach a broader audience, but you know, can also see how your current approach might be hindering your results. So the third challenge, just again on uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, other things that are important to consider uh, in your HR systems and why a talent intelligence platform can be really impactful is around resume masking. So being able to mask things like photos, names, even uh, names of universities or companies, because sometimes companies are might be very small and it might be able easily to identify who the person is when you're looking at uh, someone in your pool. So if you want to have kind of a level playing field for your hiring managers to really surface the most relevant talent and the best match based on skills and experience, the masking can be a really key uh, way to do this. And also, uh, since you're kind of running your process end to end, it just doesn't start it's sourcing, it doesn't start, you start from internal mobility, it kind of spans, runs the gamut. You're looking through your process from requisition to hire on the acquisition side, for example. You can really review representation by stage and see where in your process people might be falling out and what that means for your diversity representation. So these features combined with some of the other elements, such as a personalized career site, can work together to really help organizations operationalize their DEI efforts. So I, there's another example is um, some research from Harvard that illustrated how women tend to apply only to jobs they feel they're a strong fit for, that they only hit 10 out of 10 on the, the job description of all the required skills, whereas men might just jump in if they feel like they have half of those and, and just throw their hat in the ring for a particular role. So one of the things we identified across our current Eightfold clients is that personalization and guided matching have helped drive 60% more female applicants on average, regardless of industry. So it's helping both the candidate have the confidence that, oh, it's telling me that I've got these skills that can be a great match for this role and giving them the confidence to apply, as well as helping the recruiter understand not only explicit skills, but inferred skills and skills that, are, that person's likely to have based on the different organizations, roles, time periods, uh, and other data that, that is relevant to their experience in their particular path. Uh, on the fourth challenge, uh, when we talk about understanding and identifying skills, as organizations kind of try to plan for the future and employees you know, desire career growth and some semblance of a path or a plan, there's been a variety of ways that talent acquisition and talent management teams have tried to tackle this challenge. But the issue is really how can you deliver personalized, meaningful, real-time experiences for hundreds, let alone thousands of employees? So with a combined talent intelligence platform, one of the primary solutions we attempt to provide or that we work with customers to deliver is a way to address this at scale with the concept of an internal talent marketplace and career hub. Because each employee, regardless of where they are, have their own history, their own goals, their own aspirations. And those aspirations might be the immediate next role in the next six to nine months or a role that's three or five levels away. So what's often missing is kind of how they can see, how do I get from A to B? How can I get there? Uh, but using you know, purpose-built AI can help the employee understand the skills they need to gain or improve to step closer to their goals and really deliver to them in the form of the right content to the right person at the right time within a career hub. And here's just a, an example. When we talk about sort of meeting each employee where they are with their development paths that are personalized, um, it can, it's really essential for career development, for retention and engagement, but increasingly difficult in a remote environment. So based on some of the research that was shared earlier, it's important to identify the training and opportunities that are most relevant for the organization and the employee. So individuals aren't spending time getting trained in skills that might not be needed by the organization or may not help them along their path to their next project or the next role or promotion. So that's where we work with customers to help with career planning and internal movement through identifying skills, mentors, corresponding training through different you know, learning management systems, external courses, et cetera, that can help people along their journey in a way that's both kind of meaningful to them and the organization. 
So with that, I'll just kind of skip to maybe two concluding slides and then happy to take any questions. So just to summarize a little bit about AFOLD, like I mentioned before, we ingest at the very bottom from multiple different data sets. So both global data sets and public data sources. Also, we integrate with HR information systems, learning management systems, uh, applicant tracking systems. And that's the basis of what our talent intelligence platform then powers in terms of capability matrices, explainable AI. And at the very top, it's really spanning both from talent management to talent acquisition to contingent worker hiring and also public sector uh, marketplaces such as workforce exchange that we're doing with the uh, state of Indiana, state of New York, and uh, working with Department of Defense and others. And then just to kind of close, some of the points around these challenges that we've talked about that are in the market today and some of the solutions that can help uh, address them or help make things better. Some of the things that we're seeing with organizations uh, with talent intelligence are kind of interesting data points in terms of spanning sort of quality experience and efficiency. We think about getting more career site visitors to apply. So again, leveraging the power of brands. So a company like uh, Dexcom, they do um, insulin detection devices, medical devices, and they saw like 40% career site visitors applying. Companies like Postmates that saw a 91% increase in female applicants when we're talking about the importance of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And then other improvements across internal mobility, internal hires, faster time to fill, and uh, fewer recruiter hours per role. So those are some of the things that kind of are our North Star, the things that we try to help drive efficiencies for the companies we work with. So I'll just pause there, Audrey, and see if there's any questions from the audience. Yeah, <clears throat> we have a couple. Um, Stephanie's asking, how do you integrate with other end-to-end -end HR platforms like Workday? Definitely, that's a great question. So we have a lot of joint customers with Workday, with Oracle Teleo, with SAP Success Factors. So we have a, a platform API capabilities that allow to uh, have bi-directional sync with those systems um, and pull in the information. And basically, it's kind of uh, tailored to the way an organization is using those different systems. They might be primarily system of record for payroll or others, or they might be using some of the recruiting capabilities and so on and so forth. So we're able to use those source systems as data source for your talent funnel and then see how your applicant process is working and leverage our matching and other AI capabilities kind of layered on on top of. So we definitely um, integrate with those systems is something that's fairly common across the organizations that we work with. Yeah, thanks, Shabba. We don't have any more questions and we're actually in perfect timing. So let me take a moment, Shabby, to, um, to thank you and to thank Eightfold for joining us and um, for our participants in today's conference. Be sure to visit their virtual exhibits for access to some really um, fantastic information.